Hi, I'm Kylie. And I'm Olivia. And today we're looking at a piece done by Helen Frankenthaler. This piece is called Eden, and it was done in 1956. Helen's work introduces this new approach to art that's known as abstract expressionism. She used a process to create this blend or this bleeding of colors. She produces organic shapes with this process. Uh, the process she uses is pouring thin down acrylic paint onto an unprimed canvas. It's a very flowing process that's loose and relaxed. The color hues she uses tend to be the same warm colors and all her pieces have an abstract image or a lack of a three-dimensional volume. Her pieces also give rise to this color field movement, her abstract imagery, and the relationship between image and surface techniques. Uh, the layering of pigments and making marks are oftentimes random. These pieces tend to be done on large scale, about nine feet. In this piece, Eden, you clearly have some imagery like the sun in the upper left-hand corner and you also have a hand on the upper right-hand corner. Uh, Kylie, what hand do you think that is? I want to say it's the right hand only because I feel like she applied paint and actually stuck her hand on there. That's what it looks like to me. But this piece is different from a lot of her work because you can identify objects such as the hand. Um, and she placed what looks like a target in the center of the piece which really divides it and the numbers on 100 written on both sides give it that symmetrical feel. Yeah, there is obviously is some relationship to religion in this piece since the title is Eden. For example, the red circle in the center of the page that really divides it can be seen as the forbidden fruit, the apple that Adam and Eve ate. There has also been a lot of reviews on this piece. Um, regarding religious symbols, in addition to the apple, some people saw two trees in the house of God. And back to the hand that we mentioned before, people even referred it to the hand of God upraised in a gesture that can only mean stop. Yeah, I see a lot of this uh, symmetry and these symbolisms. Um, and actually, Frankenthaler herself said that these two hundreds are not for any reason like at all. It was a goal for her to contrast this straight and vertical line followed by two circles, which gives you that hundred. Um, she also said, I like the hundred that I made because I wanted to play symmetry and add another reflective 102. And that's different from a lot of her pieces because it is symmetrical. And when you, when you look at mountains and seas, you see that. Eden is definitely different from her other works where she just bleeds color and paint and leaves out imagery. It is similar, however, to the piece you mentioned, Mountains and Seas, because of its width and its color palette. Yeah, Mountains and Seas definitely divides the piece vertically, and you can also see what looks like pencil marks even, and lines which she doesn't really include in a lot of her work. Yeah, you can say it is also important that Frankenthaler as a woman steps beyond the traditional gender roles. Yeah, I feel like a lot of Frankenthaler's pieces she wanted to, to be appealing to the eye and these natural images and she even says herself in a quote, um, what concerns me when I look at it is not whether or not the picture is a landscape or whether if it's pastoral or whether somebody will see a sunset in it. What concerns me is did I make a beautiful piece? A lot of Frankenthaler's pieces were easily identifiable through her process and this amazing abstraction she brings. Yeah, and just to recap, I feel like this piece, Eden, really shows her as an artist and the technique she uses where she bleeds the color and the paint into the canvas. And even her imagery and placement of things, um, she really just wants this piece to come across as beautiful on her own. And her colors and organic shapes is what really makes extract expressionism possible.